if I sign into Tinkercad, then I can start working and I have an account with Autodesk, so it will log me in straight away, just with my normal uh, credentials. And it keeps everything in the cloud, so the Autodesk Cloud's remembering all the work that I've done. Um, and this is what I've actually printed here, so the nut and bolt version 3, uh, and that worked. So I have adjusted it slightly. So to do this, I created a new design from my um, dashboard there. So what, what you see here is the work plane. So everything's going to fit on and snap onto this plane and it's working on a horizontal kind of area there. So what I'm going to do to start with is just go down this list on the right. These are the basic shapes I can use. And we have a polygon shape here. And I can click on that and I can just place this onto the work plane there. And that gives me this solid. If I use a right click or control click, I can move the work area around um, and I can make that, um, just work with that in that way. So I can adjust that. I want to have six sides on it. So it's actually set to six sides already. I can change that number parametrically. I could type something in there if I want to have a different shape. And you can see there it's actually changed to a different, um, different amount of sides. Mm -hmm. But I did want to have uh, six, um, so I'll return it back to there. You've also got uh, whether you want to bevel it and how many segments it is. The other thing to look at here is whether it's a solid or a whole. Now let's go, this cover, this is used in all um, CAD pack packages. What, what are you making? Is it something solid or is it something that will, will have a, a gap in it? Now I'm not going to do any adjustment on this. But if I want to see how, how large it is, or if I want to scale it, I can click it up and pull it there, and I can see how that's, that's shaping or misshaping. Um, or I can actually type in the numbers there. If I know that I want to have a certain size in a certain dimension, I can add them in there. So I'm going to undo those, because I just want to keep it as its natural size, which was about 20 mil from side to side. When I, when I clicked on that, it said it was... Um, 20 millimeters in one one direction. So across here is 17.32. So if I am using that as a nut or bolt, <coughs> then that will uh, be that size, and I need that size of um, spanner to, to open it. So on this list, we haven't actually got a, a thread, but in terms of making it easy for myself, I can look at other things as well as these basic shapes can make text uh, and symbols, but we also have some community shape generators, um, featured shape generators as well. So if I click on this, it's got some shapes that are already made. So I can look down this list, and I may be able to search this list, but I remember last time that I could just uh, pick a thread off this list as well. I you said something about community shapes. Are we, by any chance, talking about uh, Thingiverse, or is it the AutoCAD community, or didn't you mean that? This is generated by third parties, or it's extra sort of plugins that, that come with it. So we've got basic shapes, which are the basic geometry. Yes. Um, but these ones here, I don't know who's made them, but there's the featured shape generators, and there's an isometric thread, which I'm going to click workspace as well. So I can see that there. Um, I've just dragged that onto the window. Again, I can adjust that size if I want to, or I can just bring it into this um, this uh, other polygon and adjust that. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to control click, which is a right click if you've got um, a mouse, and I'm just going to bring that up tall, and you can see there that it's actually expanding that thread. So I don't actually want to do that. You see that's, that thread's going to be off um, it's going to be too wide if I, if I just scale it in that way. But what I can do from this um, here, I should be able to uh, tell it how many segments there are. I should be able to scale it up from... No, it's not that bit. Sorry, I've forgotten how I actually scaled it now. Probably rotations. Rotations, that's the one. <laughs> so I'll bring the rotations around. That tells you how many times that is rotating around that spot. So, um, to make that into a, uh, 
a nut to go on top of this. I could just bring that down. So I'm trying to just uh, adjust those to fit. Um, and on the top of this, there is a, when I select it, there's a small cone. So these ones, these handles here, I can pick up and I can move to, to scale it or adjust the, the size of it. This one should move it downwards in the scene. So I'm just bringing that down into inside that polygon and you can see that thread will, will, will go through that. So it's slightly offset, so I just need to kind of line that up a little bit better in the middle. Um, and I'm just doing that by eye, but I could click on this to make sure I've got the, uh, the right spot for that. So finally, to make that into um, the nut to go on there, I just turn that into a hole. And I can still see that in there, um, but it's kind of gone slightly transparent. You can't quite see through that as, as a nut, but you, you can do. So if I want that, that nut to be smaller, I can actually just scale that down um, and pick a height for that. But that thread will work on that item. So I can do that again to make the, um, uh, the bolt to go with this nut. Uh, if I want to do it quite simply, I can duplicate what I've got already, and that will keep it to be the same size. Um, and I should be able to drag that to a different position. Now this time I want something slightly different. I want this isometric thread to go on top of this face on this geometry here. So I can take this work plane and I can uh, click on that and I can put it on top of that face and I click that there. And you see that work plane moves up. So now when I make an isometric thread, I can put it on there and press click and that will go onto the top of that face rather than below it. And then again I can move these rotations and make that taller um, to make it actually fit together with that object. Now there's an also a uh, couple of other parameters I looked at. I think um, there's a sort of tapering as you come off to the top of that um, item there which I think you can change slightly. The tip scale here so you can actually change how that, that works. I tried to bring that right down so it kind of went into a sharper sharper piece. Um, but that was essentially it. That is my, my nut and bolt in um, a few minutes. And if I want to print that out to 3D, I go here and I say export, um, download for printing. I can say everything in the design, download that as an STL. And that should come down here now. And there, if I open that into, I'm going to bring it into FreeCAD now. Oh. used to open it into uh, mesh, mesh design it. Right. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, well it does open if I open with into mesh lab of default. XYZ where is what I've been printing with today, so that should ah, I'm not logged on, apparently. Uh, but you can see the shape that comes into the print area there. Um, and what I did, I printed that with a um, a raft underneath it because it wasn't gripping and it, it kind of lost the shape previously. Um, so it's that, that simple to bring that together. There are other, like I was saying, there were some other featured shapes, so community shape generators. I think in there I found um, an iso a collection of isometric threads. Mm -hmm. um, if I actually probably go back to my, um, it gives it a, a strange name, Frantic Rotis is what is it's given the name of this one. But, I thought um, that was one of your pseudonyms. No, this is generated by uh, Autodesk for me. And um, so, yeah, this one here, I copied this from someone else when I was looking at how to do threads. But this has got the different dimensions of um, several useful size threads. Um, obviously, I would recommend doing 10 mil and above for printing because you want to print larger objects. Um, because the nozzles aren't that fine, or the, the accuracy isn't that fine mm. when you're um, on a sort of low low grade mm. 3D printer. So depending on what you've got, so take some advice on how how big you're going to do it. Um, and, and just have interest, what sort of grain is that compared to the example that we just looked at? What okay. sort of? 
the, the example that we've got, what sort of, is that like 10, 12, 14? Uh, that was, I think the one that I printed off was about 12 mil, oh. 12 mil thread on it. And, um, oh, the other thing I had to do, well reminded, is that, um, if I just go back and, and take this, I had to change the size of the thread, which was the hole. Because I did print it up at first, and they were exactly the same uh, diameter. So if I look at this and look at the parameters of that, that diameter was 12 millimeters on that original one that I printed. And this one didn't fit in. So I changed the diameter of the thread on the, uh, the nut to be 12 and a half millimeters. And then it fits very tightly oh, okay. and just works within that. So I had to reprint that. Um, but I didn't have to reprint everything because you can select a part and then when you do an export you do only the selected shapes and that would just do the nut um, for me as well. Uh, I, have, I don't have a particularly good printer, well I don't have a very good printer at all, but I did that in about half an hour to print those two, two pieces, yeah. so it's fairly quick.